Hello everyone and welcome to Eco Elsa. On today's episode we'll be covering how to gather your students in the forest and fun games to play with them while hiking to keep them occupied. So let's get started. Ah, this one's a good one. <gasps> hug a tree, hug a tree, hug a tree, hug a tree, hug a tree. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Goodbye, cool world. So for today I have something different for all of you. I have compiled a nice sized list of all of my favorite outdoor hiking games and uh, ways to gather your students together. Um, this will give you more tools and tricks to make it easier to take your students outside, which is the goal of this show. So let's get started with our very first rounding up your students. Now this is very important because if you make this fun and you keep it interesting and you switch it up a little bit, your students are less likely to drag their feet, which will save you time to do with other activities. Sound good? So the first um, a student gathering technique that we will cover is one we talked about in my previous video on class management called animal calls. But we're going to be adding a couple more things to up your game with it a little bit. So how it works is it's just like the teacher in the viral video where he goes ka -ka, ka -ka, and all his children respond back ka -ka, ka -ka. You'll be doing some kind of an animal call and the students will be responding back with that animal call as they run to you. You can do a, to up your game with this a little bit, you can do a countdown so that they have to get to you within five seconds or um, another way of upping your game with this a little bit is you switch which animal it is after each activity so before you start the activity go with the students okay what animal do we want to be the get together animal for this activity and the students will all be yelling and raising their hands for which animal you should do so you can do that or you can make it a special privilege. So say um, your students did really well with a previous activity. You pick a student who is doing really well and you go, I liked Jimmy's behavior with sharing the acorns of his fellow squirrels. You know, this works really well if you have one of those difficult students in your class that you want to try and really be like, you're doing a good job, but I don't really want to like make a big deal out of it, but I want to like reward you a little bit. There's a lot of different animals that you can do, so start working on your animal calls to help with this. One of the students' favorites is a dolphin call. So the second strategy for gathering your students is called walk like an animal. It's similar to animal calls, but you're asking the students to directly move like a certain animal on their way back. Kind of like, walk like an Egyptian. No? Egyptian? No, but we're focusing on animals for this. The dancing comes for a later activity. So, how this works is you'd yell out to move like a certain animal. Once again, you can have the students pick what animal that is going to be ahead of time, or you can just pick a random animal. But what's really nice about this one is it gets them to move however fast you want them to move. So say you guys are good for time, you can tell them to hop like a frog back. Say you guys are a little bit more scrounged for time, you gotta get moving, tell them to gallop like a horse back. Okay students, gallop like a horse back to the meeting spot right here. Clippity 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 clop. <laughs> so the third uh, strategy for getting students to gather back together is one we also went over. It's called magnetic elbow. So as said before in a previ previous video, what you do is you yell out magnetic animal and you count down and that's the amount of time the students have to get to you and put their elbows together like magnets. What's great about this is it helps with getting your students into a circle without telling them to circle up and you don't have to make them hold hands, which depending on what age you work with, getting students to hold each other's hands can be a challenge in itself. The fourth technique for getting students to gather back together is yelling dance party. This allows students to pick and choose however it is they want to move back to you. They just have to dance back to where you are. So if you have even a student who really doesn't want to dance, tell them to put their hands in their pocket and just step, step, step. Make sense? Dance party! It 
It's electric. Uh, student gathering technique number five. So this one is called caterpillar and butterfly. So how it works is when you need your students to all get together and get into a line behind you, you yell caterpillar and they're supposed to all line up behind you like they're a bunch of little caterpillars or they're a bunch of pieces of one big caterpillar and you're the head. And then when you get to your next location to do your next activity or you get back to the classroom, you tell your little caterpillars that they have become butterflies and to fly, fly away. Fly, my pretties, fly, fly. <laughs> Maybe not quite like that, but you get the idea. Maybe your kids will like that idea though, who knows? What else is nice about telling the students to fly away is they can pick and choose how they want to fly away. You don't necessarily have to say butterfly. Meow. Meow. The sixth and last uh, technique for gathering your students together is also kind of a trail game. It's called porcupine and wolf. So how it works is if you as the teacher yell out wolf, your students need to go and hide behind the closest tree to you or closest trees. Emphasize the close part. <laughs> if you yell porcupine though, the students need to all run back to you and gather around you tightly, depending on your comfort level. Sometimes the preschoolers, honestly, they like hug your legs, but um, gather as close to you as possible, like their leaves stuck to your quills and you're a big giant porcupine. Wolf! Porcupine! So next we're moving on to the hiking games or little activities you can do with your students while you're walking between uh, locations. What's great about this is if you have a group of students that get really distracted and you need to kind of keep them on task and moving, um, you can reward them by doing a good job of this by playing little trail games that are super quick and don't take up too much time walking between areas. It also makes the hike more fun and gets the kids being a little bit active outdoors and giggling and laughing a little bit. So the first hiking game is one called Owl and Mouse. Now this usually works better for younger kids, but if you have a really goofy, a um, little bit older elementary age group, um, they might really like this game too. So how it works is you are the big owl and you have a bunch of little mice hiking behind you which is your students and what happens is while you're hiking at some point you go you make owl hooting noise and then you turn around because you are now going to be trying to see if any of your mice move. All your children must freeze. Now if they move and you see them move as the owl, then you eat them. And they have to go to the end of the line, which most little kids don't really like too much, so they want to win. Uh, the second way you can eat them and send them to the end of the line is if you get them to laugh. So now you get to be as goofy and obnoxious as possible as you want to be at least. And I like being pretty goofy. So I get all up in those children's face and I go, Hoo! and I get them to laugh. <laughs> or I'm goofy and crazy and get them to laugh so that they have to go to the end of the line. Trust me, the little ones love it. It's a great game. They can't get enough of it. And what's great about this is now you have a fun game to reward your students with good behavior for. So it encourages good behavior. That's that's enough silly faces. I've got to save a little bit for the kids, right? Can't give you guys all this good stuff right here. So the second hiking game is one called flash flood and you can also add meteor shower on this so how flash flood works is you as the teacher yell out flash flood and now your students will have whatever number you count down usually it's 10 to get their feet off the ground now you need to set whatever rules for this as clearly as possible here are my rules normally so normally you can get your feet off the ground by standing on a log by hugging a tree and pulling your feet up off the ground, or by hanging off the branch of a sturdy tree. This means that little trees, little baby trees, are off limits. If it's small enough that you can fit your whole hand around it, you probably shouldn't be hanging on it. Flash flood! 
Bob's it, Bob's it, Bob's it. Oh. Ooh, safe. How meteor shower works is it's the opposite. So the students are going to have to um, hide underneath something. It's not get their feet off the ground. It's a duck and cover from the meteors that are coming down. So usually you need to say this in an area where there's like picnic tables or a shelter or a jungle gym or um, logs that the kids can actually get under. Emphasize safety. Don't make the kids like throw themselves under a log and hit their head. It is a really fun game to play though. The kids get really into it and they can't get enough of it. And what's great is for, um, it's like a right around um, fifth grade age level, you go over a lot of like landscape stuff or changing landscapes or even like the water cycle in fourth grade. So flash flood can be applied to a lot of different subjects and standards to help the students continue to learn. So it could be like, Someone explain to me what a flash flood is and we'll play flash flood or can you guys name the four parts of the water four of the main parts of the water cycle and we'll play flash flood. You can also incorporate these games this way as review for while you're out out in nature. Cuz a lot of times kids don't want to just review for the sake of reviewing. You got to add on like a little bit of a game for it. So what's great about flash flood and meteor shower is that you can say it at any volume to trick your kids. Also really fun about flash flood is you can say words that aren't flash flood but start with flash or start with something that sounds similar. So sometimes to trick my students I'll say flash dance and sometimes the kids will be a little cheeky and they'll start dancing. This is where the whole dance party gathering technique came from for me at least. Um, or you could say something like fast food and then I'll have the kids who are really cheeky and they'll be rubbing their bellies like they just ate a bunch of fast food. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite go-to games. Flash Flood! Flash Flood! <gasps> hug a tree, hug a tree, hug a tree! <laughs> the third hiking game is one called Camouflage. Now this is one that you can play as its own activity, but also as a quick activity while you're hiking. It's similar to um, Porcupine and Wolf, except for there's this one key thing, that the students need to be able to keep their eyes on you and be able to see you, but you can't see them because they're camouflaging. The idea is like you're a hungry coyote and they're a bunch of bunnies, and in real life a bunny would want to be able to see the coyote that's hunting it. So the students need to hide somewhere where they can at least see you, and then as part of the game you'll pick out the students as what they're wearing and see them and call them back over to you. But if uh, any of the students you don't see, you'll then hold up a number nice and high and the students, when you say go, are going to need to stand up and hold that number up. Now it's the student who is the closest to you, but also who is also holding up that number who wins. And how you start the game is by yelling camouflage. Camouflage! Ah! Hide! And this is another game where I like to sometimes trick the students and yell something else instead of camouflage. You, you kind of sense a theme here, correct? Okay. Camouflage! 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 You can't see me! Nope, you can't see me. Mm. You can't see me. Nope, you definitely can't see me. Uh, the fourth and final trail game is one called Seed Showdown. Now this is another activity that you can just do as an activity on its own with the students, but also makes a fun uh, review hiking game. So how Seed Showdown works is that there are four different actions of different types of seeds that the students will have to do, and it's for review. Now, in about second, third grade, a lot of schools cover um, how to group uh, plants and animals, and one of the ways that you can group plants is by what kind of seeds they bear. So there's four kinds of seeds. You have flyers, so these are the seeds like uh, the little helicopters off of maples or the little floating fluffy seeds from like dandelions, and it's a seed that kind of flies away to its new location. The second kind of seed is hitchhikers. So these are the hitchhikers with the little hooks and claws on them that they're like velcro and that stick to someone. The third type of seed is um, poppers and how poppers work is they're on a plant their their mother plant and when they get brushed they spring off of the plant and to a new location and the fourth and final seed type is droppers so droppers are the things like acorns and apples the tasty seeds that just drop to the ground and then animals come and pick them up and eat them and take the seeds elsewhere 
The actions for all four of these are as follows. If you yell out flyer, then the students fly. If you yell out popper, then the students hug their knees to their chest and they pop, they spring off the ground. If you yell hitchhiker, depending on the students and the age and your comfort, comfort level, um, they either will hug each other or onto each other's arms. Some teachers don't mind if the kids pretend to cling to them with just their hands. Maybe not quite hugging because it's a hitchhiker. It's not a hugger. That'd be a really cute name for a seed. And the last one is droppers. So these are the, the students will once again go on the ground and they will put their arms around their knees, hug their knees to their chest. And then they might like sway back and forth or you can have them try and roll away like how um, an acorn seed would roll after falling to the ground. So it makes for a really fun game in itself. Flyer! Meow! So that is all we have time for for today. Um, if you really liked these activities, comment in below what was your favorite activity or share some of your own. There's ways to gather students and hiking games with your students. Share them below so we can all learn from your experience as well. If you liked this video, please subscribe below to get notifications about all my videos as they go up. But as always, I post new videos on Wednesday. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see me do in the future, please uh, comment below those ideas or tweet me at Elsa Lataki. As always, I hope you all have an awesome week. You be safe, learn lots, have fun, and get your kids outdoors. Bye!